so today we will be learning about linux command till now we have learned about structure and uh, basic functions of linux and what are the things that are special in linux so basically now we will be shifting towards linux commands so after learning the commands we will be learning linux scripting so that is the end goal that we want to reach and i am muting everyone present here so okay so starting with linux command so linux commands are the commands that are used to work on the system so basically what the command does is there is a kernel that is the lowest or the base part of the whole system and then above that there is user layer so as i told you in the first uh, second class there are two parts so first is kernel layer and another is user layer so the kernel layer should be secured and protected so that nothing wrong can happen to the kernel command so we want full protection to the kernel and to access the kernel from the user end we want to have some something in between so what is something in between is we can't directly use kernel right that is true so we can't directly go to kernel and do this uh, uh that read this file system read this file open this do this we can't do that so we need some medium so that we can interact with kernel so there should be another layer that is between kernel and the user layer so basically if we just uh, write it again so this one is the hardware layer and on hardware layer this is the software layer software layer software layer or user layer so hardware and software to connect these two things there is kernel so this is the thing so now how to connect these two these are not connected directly to each other so we need something that user can write and ch make changes in kernel so what is that thing so there is really simple thing about uh, this we will be using linux commands for this for all the stuff that we are going to use and so yeah so in the next step writing shell script so what is shell so literally shell is this so what a shell does it protects the person or it protects the animal that is present inside the shell a uh, shell does not protect a person but in case a person is having shell on it that shell will pro protect that person also so that is shell so shell is a protection that is given to kernel that's why it is given as shell and shell script means a line or series of commands that are used to run multiple commands on a single script on the shell of kernel okay so that is shell okay so first question that comes in everyone mind is is it very difficult to learn because we are learning shells then is it difficult to learn so these are the answers for that if you are using any major operating system you are indir indirectly interacting to shell so if we are using any operating system like windows or uh, just linux or some android phone also we are directly interacting with shell because shell is the link between kernel and the user right so every time we use the operating system we are interacting with shell if you are using ubuntu linux mint or any other linux distribution you are interacting with shell every time you use terminal okay so terminal is a command prompt that is present in linux so in windows we write cmd that is command prompt in linux it is terminal the terminal is more powerful than cmd not more powerful but it has it is having a lot of variation that a person can use to do so terminal can do every small task that is possible in the system but for cmd we have to pick up the mouse and do the stuff even terminal is able to install the files install the software that you want you don't even need to click next 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 to install that software you just need to write the command 
sudo apt get install and paint it will install paint in your system without even clicking anything so terminal is very powerful as compared to uh, like cmd in windows so let's discuss about linux shells and shell scripting before understanding so shell scripting we have to get familiar with the following terminologies So we have to get familiar with three terminolo terminologies that is kernel, shell, and terminal. So we have already learned a lot about kernel and even a lot that is required to be learned from our side. So we now know kernel very well. And then shell, shell is the outer covering layer of the terminal, of the kernel. So that is shell. So shell is a calcium type bone out of, uh, that is covering an animal. To protect that person, uh, protect that animal from uh, other uh, animals. So yeah, that is shell. So it is protecting the kernel from outside outside world. And there comes a terminal. So terminal is used to interact with shell. So we have learned it here, interacting to shell every time you use terminal. So these are the th three things that we need to learn. So scripting is more practice than concept. That is true. We know the concept once and then we have to practice a lot using the scripting so that we can uh, learn and remember all the scripts. Okay. So what is kernel? So this is a comparison between kernel and genie. So kernel can be called a genie. A genie is the one that uh, asks for us for three wishes and we choose any three of them. Uh, so the genie just uh, fulfills our requirement. So basically kernel is a requirement computer kernel is a computer program that is a core of computers operating system with complete control over everything in the system so that is not present in windows uh, so the kernel is having the con complete control of the system complete control of the program even you can make sure that the power uh, that the fans in your cpu should run this at this speed or not so it can all be decided by kernel only. So kernel manages following resources. So first is file management, then process management, input output management, IO management, device management, and memory management. So these are the five things broadly classified that are managed by kernel. So yeah, kernel is kind of genie that manages everything and will work uh whatever we say so it does everything that we say okay so yeah so how can script shell help me so why we are learning script shell shell scripting and how it will help me right so it is a quote that c c plus plus java candidates even with 10 years ex of experience will 20 i will write 2500 line program to do something but that same thing can be done in 30 seconds with a simple unix command so we'll just see how powerful it is because c c++ java candidate even with 10 plus years of experience like they are most experienced in writing the shortest code possible and still they have to write 2500 lines of code but we can do in 30 seconds using a simple unix command so unix command is nothing but a linux command and the difference between Linux and Unix is just a very simple that Unix is paid version. Linux is free. Linux is a copy of Unix and Unix is used in industries, but Linux can be used by anyone, by anyone for home, home offices, companies and everything. So yeah, Unix came first, then the copy of Unix that was Linux, it was created. And Unix is open source and free, but Unix is paid one and specific people are required to work on that. And similarly with Windows versus Linux, Unix is just operated by the company members or the members working in that company. So it has a high number of viruses as compared to Linux because in Linux it is open source and everyone can just edit and do all the things. 
So in a case, we can just compare Unix with Windows. So Windows and Unix are almost same as compared to Linux. Okay. Okay. So this is a big interview mistake that everyone does. Everyone thinks that Linux, Linux to worlds has developed Linux, Linux OS, but he just developed the Linux kernel. He is not the one who developed the whole Linux. So Linux was developed by some other person, by the community, but he developed the Linux kernel. So the thing that runs in all the systems, uh, the worldwide thing. So that is Linux kernel. It was developed by Linux store worlds, but Linux, Linux OS was developed by some other person. So what composes a complete Linux system? So if you are talking about a complete Linux system, what are the components of it? So first component is kernel. As we know, kernel is the main ingredient of everything. Then there is GNU, GNU not Unix, and system utilities and libraries that we all know. Then other management scripts to manage the system files and explorer and other stuff. Then last is installation script. So this is complete Linux system, but kernel was developed by Linux store worlds. Okay, so a complete Linux system composed of these components, kernel plus utilities and libraries, then other management scripts and installation script for installing Linux or other systems. Okay, so now coming forward, how can shell script help me? Help me? Okay. As developers, we make computer work for others. Computer could work a lot for ourselves too. So shell script is faster way to get work done. So what it means is like it is simple that we make the computer work for others as developers and computer could do a lot of works itself too. But shell, shell script makes the work easier. Shell script is very fast and it gets executed very fast. So it's great. So a shell script is a special user program which provides an interface to the user to use operating system services. So as I told you, kernel and user interface, the link between kernel and user interface is shell. So shell allows us to interact with kernel. And as we know, kernel is equal to genie. And we can ask genie to do any task that is possible in the system. And so we need something that can link or translate. So we can uh, like we can say that shell is a translator which converts the human language into kernel readable format. So kernel reads that and does the work. So a shell is a special program which provides interface to user to use operating system services. Then shell accepts human readable commands from user and convert them into something which kernel can understand. It is similar as uh, when we run C, C++ code. The C++ code is high level language that we can understand and it get converted into um, assembly language and other stuff that is used by system. So shell converts, uh, is that clear? So shell just converts the language of human to something that kernel can understand. Okay, so it is a command language interpreter that executes command read from input devices as keyboard or from files. So by interpreter, what it means is we enter the first line, it get executed. We enter second line, it get executed. Third line, again, it get executed. So compiler is one, two, three, four, five. All these lines are done and it compiles everything and then run them. But interpreter, we enter one line, it get executed. Then second line, it get executed. So all the lines are getting executed as per their order. Okay. So the shell gets started when user logs in or start the terminal. So definitely that is the thing. So terminal is the thing that uses shell. So we can use shell using terminal and it gets started when the user logs in. So whenever the user logs in the, to the computer, the shell starts. Okay. Uh, so that's uh, great. So basically shell is broadly cl classified into two categories, just like. Uh, Linux. So Linux is again two types, 
G U I N C U I C L I. So G U I N C L I. Again, the shell is two categories: graphical shell and command line shell. We will learn about it later. But command line shell will just use keyboard, and graphical shell will use mouse also for selection, copy pasting, and other stuff. So now everyone gets scared about the shell. Like it is scary. How can I work with that? There are a lot of commands that are going in here. So how to understand this? What is this? What is this green line? And what is this numerical values that is present in the system? And this is what what is one to one and other stuff. What is this dashes and cross? So everyone gets scared when they see a terminal. But for someone who is using that terminal, it becomes easy. So if someone just sees this, he gets scared because something is green, something is grey, something is blue. So what is uh, what it is? Why why is everything colorful and why why we have to learn all this? So that is a little scary thing until you know. But when you just know how to use everything. You will just feel it's fine. It's great. So basically, shell can be accessed by user using command line interface. Command line interface is given by terminal. Command line interface is provided by terminal on which we write the code. So a special program called terminal in Linux or Mac OS or command prompt in Windows, Windows OS is provided. To type the human readable code such as cat, ls, and then it is being executed. Okay, so when we run cmd command prompt terminal in Linux, so if we write the command there and it get executed in our system. So this is the way the terminal looks like and all the things are present in here. So this is using ls command. So ls command means list. So it just it is, we will learn the commands later, but uh, just for as we came through it, so we will learn it. Ls means list. So it will list all the files that are present in a particular folder. When we write ls, so where we are in the system, it just lists out all the files that are present. So this person writes ls dash l. So ls dash l uh, is an argument. So this is an argument. Which we will learn later. These are optional. Arguments are optional. If we don't write this, then still it will work fine without any issue. Okay. So ls dash l. So by ls it means list, and it just listed all the files that are present. So it's the same like when we browse folder in Windows. So it is saying total six fifty six fifty two files are there. Then owner is this. This person is the name of owner, and four zero nine six. That is the size of that, and this is the date, and this is the file name. And this one, when we talk about, this is the permission of each file. We will learn about this later, but uh, that is the basic overview of Linux commands. So ls will show all the directories that are present. Okay, so. but works with mouse then then what is the use of mouse okay so graphical shells or uh, graphical shells provide us the means for manipulating program based on graphical user interface so for why we will use mouse what is the use of mouse okay so mouse is used for very basic tasks that is not possible by keyboard so that is opening closing moving resizing windows as well as switching focus between windows so basically if we use four or five terminals then with mouse we can click on one terminal that we want and close the terminal which we don't want okay so windows os ubuntu os can be considered this example which provide gui to user for interacting with the program okay okay so my script dot sh so dot sh is the file format for scripts right dot sh is the file name of script hmm 
now uh, we have learnt about various type of kernels various type of flavors of linux then definitely there will be different types of shells so there are three types of shell very easy very simple so first is bash bash is the most commonly used shell that we use so basically it is uh, so i will tell you that later so bash born again shell in csh c shell corn shell k sh so this is corn shell so there are three types of basic shells available for linux so what we knew is shell is the thing that interacts with uh, with the kernel and user so user writes a command in shell and the shell converts that language to computer readable format and just runs our actions there are three types of shells that are possible so bash is the most commonly used then c shell then corn shell so let me just uh, tell you about this in an analogical way so what that means is we want to do sum of two numbers right we want to do sum of two numbers but there are multiple ways to do that there is a language called c++ there is a language called python and there is a language called java all three things are eligible to do the same thing in the same way but the commands and coding will be different so if i ask someone to write a command to add to add two numbers it will be different in python different in c different in java right but all will be doing the same thing so similar to that there are three languages you can say three languages that are present in shell so bash csh and ksh so based on three these three we can use any one of them and write command so we have to learn scripting for each of the three if you want to learn three then we have to learn each script it is just like learning python learning c learning java so we have to learn every language for each of the thing but in this course we will be focusing with bash and we will be doing everything in bash because bash is the most usable language and basically c shell is similar to c if you are familiar with c c++ c then it will be easier for uh, anyone to learn in c okay so which shell should we use so the thing is whatever you prefer like no one says you that you should use python you should use c c++ java anything you can use anything that you want uh, so but we will be talking about bash here so let's bash it so bash is the shell that we are talking about and we will be using in the whole tutorial till the end and it is definitely like i am telling you that all the commands we can't ever co cover in a single course so all the commands can never be completed in a course so the person who is trying to learn that should try to learn it uh, himself also so you have to find online multiple commands that are used there or there and you have to try and experiment all the commands in your shell because whatever we are learning here we are just learning to use the terminal and how to type commands in it and how to get the result from it but it is definitely not possible to uh, learn all the things that are possible all the commands because linux is so vast and at every minute every every time a new command just comes and to learn and remember all the commands it's very difficult so the person who is trying to learn that command should try and practice more and if some command is not running then he should learn to see the documentation and how to learn how to run that command because that is a skill the person is using in future and
so definitely it's just like learning python so if someone is learning python uh, okay so if someone is learning python he will definitely not be able to do all the programs in the same class he just learns how to write python and execute python and rest all is done by himself so i am just focusing like strictly focusing on practice so i will give you the credential for using terminal and you can try every command that you found uh, and uh, practice every command that is present for you so okay okay so let's move so this is bash bash is the most widely used shell in linux it is default debugging shell in linux and mac os so if you are learning linux if you are learning terminal then in linux then surely you will be able to work in mac os also so basically you are with one thing you are learning two things at once so if you are familiar with shell scripting and all that you will definitely be working in mac without any effort so if you learned linux commands you can execute all of the commands in mac also so if you are planning to buy a new pc that is mac then this course will be a great help for you it can also be installed on windows os also so in linux and mac it is installed by default but we can also install it in windows also so so those who worked in turbo c++ there is a simple thing like csh c shell so out of three shells bash csh and ksh so csh csh the c shell syntax and usage is very similar to c programming language and it's just similar to if else loops everything is same as c programming language so if you want to use that you can also use that but we will not be learning for that and just for a quiz question we are learning about ksh uh, so ksh corn shell so corn shell was the base for posix shell standard specification if someone asks you in an interview a quiz question that is what is the base of posix shell standard specification then you have to answer corn shell and you have to learn that because it is uh, nothing can be explained in this it is just a quiz question so you have to just learn that for posix shell standard specification corn shell was the base by base again i mean the central part of that on which other things were built so base is that and each shell does the same job but understand different command and provide different built in function so ls is in bash maybe for csh or ksh ls should be different and in windows it is dir like if you want to try on your pc you can go to any folder and try dir it will show all the list of uh, files present in that okay so how good is the shell script like what is the advantage of shell script that is the main thing that it is telling so it is very good for quick one off task if you just want to rename all the files that are present in a folder and change all the extension of these ones so suppose you have mp4 videos and you want to rename them to mp3 just want to rename all the files so the one way is to just go to each file rename mp3 to mp4 and then do that but on the other case you can do is just open the shell write rename this file to this file so it will rename all the files that are present in the folder from mp4 to mp3 and mp3 to mp4 whatever you want uh, like if you are using png images then png images can be converted to jpeg or anything that you want so it is very fast for one of task and uh, also good to deal with lot of files download stuff so if you have want to download 10 songs at once you can just write a script and in a list in a text file you can write all the name of that song and just start that script it will download all the songs that are present in the list automatically for you and you can also uh, you can also mention that where to put all the songs after downloading so all these things can be done easily with scripting 
so great to automate the set of steps so basically you can also do something like that let me just uh, uh, yeah inspire the creativity inside you so you now what is what that means is suppose you click a lot of photos you click a lot of images for you and after clicking the images you just want that when i connect my phone to my computer it should automatically uh, transfer all the photos from my fold phone to the cpu cpu or laptop so it should transfer all the photos from my phone to laptop only when my phone is connected to it so when you click when you just run that command you just need to plug your phone into your computer and once you plug it all the photos from your phone will get saved into your computer as a backup and can delete all the files that are present in your phone so that is really fun activity if you want to do and also if uh, one more example so suppose you want to transfer a game to your friend transfer a song or movie to your phone friend so there are 20 songs and one movie that 10 of your friends want from your you so what you do is you can just write a script a basic script and put all the videos and images in a folder okay so there are 20 songs and five movies that are present and each one of your friend wants that so the you have 10 friends so what you will do is just run the script and you will take the friend's pen drive and plug it on your pc it will automatically start to copy all the files from that folder to his pen drive automatically you don't need to touch mouse even so once that is done you unplug the pen drive and take another one pen drive and click just plug it then just you have to repeat that process 10 times and all the same things will get copied in every person folder you can also do the same thing with two pen drive so you plug two pen drives and one data can get copied to your system also and to the friend's system friend's pen drive also so there are a lot of things that you can do easily with scripting and scripting is a really fun way to do uh yeah it is really fun and you can also uh, add passwords so if uh, your cousin or sibling someone uses your pc without your uh, like without your presence and you can just add a trap for them so a shell will come come and they have to enter the password if they enter the correct password then they will get access to the system but if they enter the wrong password the system will automatically get shut down like you don't need to worry about the battery getting off or drained of something else so it will automatically get shut down if the password is wrong so yeah shell script is very good and you can do a lot of thing so python and other languages scale up to a thousand lines but shell script scale down to a few p stroke so <clears throat> for python we can write thousand line of code but for shell script everything just happens in a one line or two line okay <clears throat> usually shell are interactive that uh, that mean that they accept the command as input from user and ex- execute them however sometimes we want to execute a bunch of commands routinely so we have uh, type in all the commands uh, each time in the terminal so what that means is linux are always uh, shells are interactive that means we have to enter one command and enter it get executed then we have to enter another command it get executed again but sometimes we want to execute a bunch of command that means you want to copy all the files from your friend friend's pen drive and delete those then copy all the files that are present in your system so these are three commands so you have to copy all the files to your system then delete all the files in friend system and copy all the files from your pc to his system so these are the three commands you have to write three commands every time you want to do that step but if you are familiar with shell scripting you can just put all the commands in different lines in a text file and just run that text file so what it will do is it will automatically do all the things it will automatically manage all the things that are to be done and execute all three processes automatically so that is the benefit of shell scripting yeah i i guess you will surely try some of them
okay so talking about philosophy philosophy is some great ideologies that the developers wanted to share with the people so what is unix philosophy unix said that write programs that do one thing and do it well so no one wants your program to do multiple things and all wrongly your program should do only one thing and should do it perfectly write program that work together so that you can run multiple program and all should work perfectly fine definitely like if so someone is playing music on his music player and he is just clicking a image then both crash that is not what we want so that is the thing and last thing is write program to handle the text streams so text stream is just input from the user so yeah that's it and uh, some more philosophy are there it should be small the whole program should be in small utilities it should pipe and redirect like uh, piping is connecting one process to another process so if one process is done then automatically it should start another process and then when that is done it should again trigger the another process so that is pipes and redirects redirects you have seen by using website so you click on one website page it directs to another page and it again redirects to another page so that is redirecting <clears throat> and the last thing is everything is a file so input from the user is file output from the user is file and error is also a file so everything is a file that we will learn later on so that is a kind of joke so bat in windows sh in linux so just don't fill the two dots because it will be not a good idea to do that so bat in windows sh in linux so what that means is the scripting uh, the thing that you i have mentioned earlier that you write three commands three lines in a text file and then just run it all three will run uh, one by one automatically so that is shell script so script so script means combination of multiple lines so in windows the script is known as bat so batch commands so dot bat so if you create a file with three lines then three dot bat will be the name of that file if you want and it will contain three files and in shell linux you will create dot sh three dot sh it will again contain three lines boards will do the same work but uh, there are different commands there are different formats of both okay so a shell can also take command from input or from file we can write these command in file and can execute them in shell to avoid repetitive work these files are called shell scripts or shell programs shell scripts are similar to batch file in ms dos so as i told you so bat and bat in like windows and shell in linux so each uh, each shell file is saved with dot sh example my script dot sh a shell script has syntax like any other programming language like for if else c c plus plus everything is having syntax so shell is having its syntax also so if you have any prior experience with any programming language like python c c plus plus it will be very easy to get started with it because the indentation the brackets and everything is present in shell also so if you know any of these language then you can surely learn this one also so it is all same everywhere so it is totally same everywhere that means all the scripts that we run all the syntax that we have learned so now till now is same so what that means in shell the keywords are if else break these are the keywords which you have fam which you are familiar with c c++ because it is same in that also then shell commands are like cd ls echo pwd touch so these are the shell commands and then function control flow if then else case and shell loops so just uh, just it is just similar to c++ just a new language you can say it as a new language that is there to do all the task so final thing 
after all the discussion after all all the things that we have studied till now there is a final question that do we need shell scripts or we don't so that is the important question like we have learned all the basic things and good things about shell then should we use it or not so why do we need that right so there are many reason to write shell scripts to avoid repetitive work and automation our system admins use shell scripting for routine backups that i told you earlier if you want to just plug your phone and copy all the images from your phone to your system every time you connect your phone and free your system memory that is used by system admins and it is also used for system monitoring and adding new functionality to the shell is also scripting okay so advantages of shell script are the command and syntax are exactly the same as those directly entered in command line so programmer do not need to switch to entirely different syntax so basically if this is a terminal and you write this command here and this is a shell this is a shell script and you write four four or five commands here then the syntax from those will be same it will be just exactly the same okay so yeah that's it and for interviews we have learned about the advantages we have to also learn about disadvantages so what are the disadvantages of shell script so definitely anything we write is prone to costly errors that means if we just uh, forgot about a hash or a semicolon the whole program will stop executing it is slow in execution and there are many design flaws in the language syntax or implementation because ls if we just look at ls we are not sure what it is like what is the meaning of ls for a new person who is introduced to shell scripting he is not going to learn about what is ls unless he tried and let me tell you a very serious thing if we just do rm dash rf and slash rm dash rf dash slash so this thing this uh, this syntax is used for removing a file rf means remove folders and all the folders present inside that all the folders and the folder present inside that and the files that are present in that so it is an argument it is optional if we just don't write it it will not delete all the files all the folders so when we write dash rf it will delete all the files all the folders that are present and this is slash so in slash instead of slash we have to write the file name so the file name can be anything abc.txt ya uh, c++ .t, c++ folder name a uh, projects a uh, folder name so since it is a very heavy command because it deletes the files so we have to use sudo for that sudo is super user do so it is a super user permission that we have to ask and give like the admin of the computer is saying to do this and do this so what this command does is it will clear all your pc all the linux from your system all the files that are present everything will be deleted everything like literally everything all the all the drives all the songs movies everything that you have in your system and just after executing this command your computer will shut down and everything will get closed why this because this slash 
in Linux, everything starts from slash. So slash is the main thing of the Py, uh, whole Linux system. So if we delete slash, so it will delete everything that is inside the slash. And slash is having your hard disk. Slash is having your Linux. Slash is having your files. So slash is having everything. If you just write this small command in any PC, just for even fun, it will be deleting everything that is present in the system. So rm is the command for removing. rf is for removing every folder, every file, and slash is the whole system. So yeah. Uh, that's how it is risky. So it's very risky to use this. Okay, so it is uh, design flaws are there. So execution speed and provide minimal data structure unlike any other scripting language. So there are nothing like arrays, pointers, or string in that uh, shell. So yeah, that's it. So let's learn about a basic command that is echo. So it is our first command introduced in the whole course, that is echo. Echo means uh, when you say something, clap, it hits the wall and comes back to you. That is an echo. So echo is used for printing. So if I write echo, this is my message. It will write this is my message as an output. So uh, yeah, that's it for the today's class. That is what echo is. We will be learning more commands later on, but uh, that's it for today's class. Okay. So, any doubt?